This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello, my little freakazoid classmates. I hope you're feeling absolutely fabulous today. And I know that you're wondering, when is the high school guidance counselor going to guide me on my problems, on my trauma, on my drama? Well, guess what, honey? I'm going to start doing it today. That's right. You can email senior superlatives pod at gmail.com with the subject line guidance classmates what, what's the guidance line classmates corner because this segment is going to be called classmates corner now i really think that you should do this because like i'm going to be giving you free advice and whoever my hot guest is of the day will also be chiming in with their little noodles. So please email us at seniorsuperlativespod at gmail.com and, you know, rid yourself of that high school trauma. You take your car to work, I'll take my board, and when you're out of fuel, I'm still afloat all along the undertow, it's strengthening its hold. I never thought it would come to this, and now I can never go home. All along the undertow, it's strengthening its hold. And I never thought it would come to this, now I can never go home. That's my rendition of Surf Wax America by one of my favorite bands as well, Weezer. Holy shit. The year is 2000. And you're thinking, okay, we've been in the year 2000 on the pod before. Refresh your memory as to what's going on in pop culture. And I will if my iPad would cooperate. But from the top of my uh, memory before it deleted the page, <laughs> I can tell you one thing I know for certain. That Angelina Jolie and Billy Bob Thornton got married in 2000. Same with Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston. The top songs on the charts were Gotta Tell You by Samantha Mumba, truly blast from the past, Try Again by Aaliyah, excellent song, Case of the X by Maya, The Real Slim Shady, Country Grammar by Nelly, Bent by Matchbox 20, remember Matchbox 20? Faded by Soul Decision, love that song. Lucky by Britney Spears. I mean, there's so many really good ones. This one is for Tevi. Don't Think I'm Not by Candy Burris. Iconic Housewife. It's My Life Bon Jovi. Oh my God. And I'm going to end on this really good one. Wow, there are so many good ones. I think I got to end on Wifey by Next. Do you remember that song? I don't think so. Will you be my wifey? Yes, I'll be your wifey. <laughs> um, now I remember it. <laughs> and you're thinking to yourself, where were we when Wifey by Next came out? We were in, and now I'm blanking on it, Bell Moore. Moore. We were in Belmore, Long Island. Correct. And who are we? We're John Gabris. That's right, Greta. Hi, John Gabris from Belmore, Long Island. That's where I was in the year 2000. 2000. I was there the years 1994 through 2000. Where were you before? Freeport, two towns over. Oh, <laughs> yeah. big move. Big move. Mom went from dental hygienist to nurse. Wow. And that upped our income just enough to scoot over two towns. That's fabulous. Yeah, it was pretty thrilling. My mom put herself through nursing school while having three kids. Oh, my God. Single yeah. mother? Uh, no, uh, married, but what, 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 did, nice. what did he do? You <laughs> yeah, know what exactly. I mean? Wow, that's yeah. amazing. It was really amazing. Uh, I couldn't place like half of those songs from the 2000s yeah. it's so funny but like a few of them have extreme staying power like Aaliyah well Aaliyah obviously dust yourself off and try again try again I don't know what that Matchbox 20 song was because I bent I'm sure if we heard it we would well it's one of those like 
songs where it's like, oh, they never say bent in it. But yeah, like, but it's like yeah. that's the song. The, the song that I remember the most is that Green Day song. I don't think it was 2000. Like, another turning point of fuck stuck in, in the road. Because they played that over the loudspeakers on the last day of yeah, this class. And we were, and everyone was crying. I remember that. I will say Bye 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 by NSYNC also came out in 2000. Same with Shake Your Ass by Mystical. I Those I don't both definitely remember. And Bye Bye Bye, I... Certainly remember because for 01 through 04, it was top shelf karaoke for oh, me and my roommates in sure. college. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my God. I feel like you were really fun. In, you're a really fun person. So I feel like you were probably really fun in high school. I was pretty fun in high school. I was really fun in college and I was pretty fun in high school. What yeah. was what was the vibe in high school? Like, were you an athlete? Were you a theater person? What was your high school like? What was going on? Tell me. Tell me everything. I was not a theater person. I was uh, obnoxious and theatrical, but uh, theater was the same season. Uh, the non-musical, I can't sing, the non-musical, the drama, if you will, yeah. was during football season, so Fall. that never worked for me. And then the musical was always in the spring, and that's yeah. a, a season I didn't play sports. But uh, it, uh, Why do all high school theater programs abide by fall play, spring musical? It's like, why I have do no do idea. That? Is it because of some, like, global comp national competition it's, i don't know oh yeah actually probably for the jimmies yeah for the jimmies <laughs> well, you were a football player i played football and i was on the swim team yes. wow yeah. were you good uh not at football and i was okay at swimming what was your stroke i was uh sh like short like sprint freestyle and the hundred meter breast or hundred yard breast wow yeah. Yeah. i have a hundred yard breast <laughs> <laughs> i prefer 250s but one 100 is not bad baby <laughs> were you a good student um i was a good test taker and a terrible person to have in class i was good at getting i would i would s do crush all my tests and never do any schoolwork. i had like classic gifted kid laziness yeah like i was just I like was always jealous of your of your kind i was like just smart enough to never stress about school but like just constantly getting in trouble for my parents for like failing missing yeah. projects not you know being an like behavioral shit man like they were on my fucking case in high school was like, it a class clown situation very much a class clown in hindsight you almost want to be like no grown-up was like there's something special about this kid. Let's yeah. foster it instead of just fucking yelling at him all day long. Yeah. And so my, I was grounded for like large swaths of junior and senior year of high school, which is insane to do socially to a fucking 17 year old. I know. I had a senior, uh, I had a girlfriend a grade ahead of me when I was a sophomore and junior and, you know, lost my virginity to her. And so I wanted to hang out with her as frequently as possible. Yeah, because you're trying to... Trying to fuck. Yeah. I'm 16. I'm 15 yeah. and 16. All I can think about is sex. And my and I'm grounded all the time. And I'm grounded for shit like Miss Paula Greco called and said that she didn't hand in your chemistry project on time or whatever. And it's like, who gives a fuck? At, like, yeah. <laughs> and you know what I'm going to be doing here Jacking off. Yeah, all now I hope day. you're happy. Yeah, that rug, that uh, the patch on the rug that the yeah. dog keeps licking. Yeah. Bad news, mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I rub come in with my heel into the rug. Because I don't know better because I'm fucking a pig. I'm a 12 year old fucking animal, feral, living in this house. I, it is. I <laughs> I, I've, I've, I, I've learned, you know, now I flush. I do think, <laughs> I do think that, like, I feel like I was really bad I was a bad bad student it was just because I was focusing on other things of course but I was also really good at like talking to the teachers you know what I mean I and, see like, that yeah <laughs> I and, can like, picture that being like con Le artist vibes level you with know? me Miss yeah <laughs> and like really being like I totally understand that like your husband is dealing with like you know, a serious health. You're issue. like leaning. Like, you're leaning yeah. with a cup of coffee you're in like, the I teacher's have like an lounge. <laughs> and I'm like, do tell. Yeah. I'm like, you need to get a divorce. I'm like, you really do. But like, I was always. I think teachers. The only reason why I got away with anything was because they were like, okay. She's like talking to us like she's 47 years old. <laughs> she's an old soul. Yeah. She's actually kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, let's just keep moving. Yeah, I, I got a lot from my teachers. They would tell my parents, like, if they if he was my son, I would love him. But as a, as a student in my class, he's an absolute distraction nightmare. I, whatever. like, get that, though, to an extent. Because, right. like, when you now reflect on teachers... 
they're all like in our age demographic. When I think, for the most part, when I think about like how crazy I was to like a twenty-seven-year-old yeah. woman. You know what I mean? Like, I was just like, this poor woman is just like, yeah, I'll sub this class. And it's yeah. like, oh, this kid with the fucking frosted tips and Star Wars backpack is going off. We've talked about this before on the podcast. You cannot be a young, hot substitute teacher. You are putting yourself at <laughs> risk because <Dude>. the students <laughs> will eat you alive. Yes, truly. My uh, all genders, uh, yeah. we just hot dude teachers activated something and even the men were yeah. like, Dude, who the fuck this guy think he is? Yeah. <laughs> like, and like in the second the hot girl from your class is like, Mr. G, to yeah. like the hunky assistant teacher, you're like, oh, fuck this. Yeah, fuck this guy. I had, we had, we had a beautiful student teacher, you know, like they would yeah. help like a teacher for a full half a year and they made her a card to like, <laughs> go, like say goodbye and uh, I was like, uh, you know, I wrote in it like two point two years and seven months till I'm 18. And I oh, put my phone number, my which God. technically is my same phone number That's now. That's so, <laughs> so funny. So, Miss Saliti, if you're out there. <laughs> How old was she, do you think? She must have been 24, 25. Okay. You know I mean, yeah. I mean. It would have been a reasonable age gap. Probably yeah. still hot. I guarantee she is. That's so <laughs> I, I mean, I guarantee you, the one who's fallen off the most is me. <laughs> That's so funny to just hit on your teacher. I straight up hit on a teacher. I, I had, like, legit crushes on teachers and was comfortable, like, bringing it. <laughs> that is, what would you say to them? No, it would just be, like, the way I am kind of now, I'd be, like, casually referencing that they were hot. You know what I mean? Or, like, well, yeah, sorry, not everyone has a hot health teacher, Miss Solnick, or whatever. And they're, like... <laughs> And I'd be like, what? <laughs> like, and everyone like, wants to bang their advisor. Yeah, sorry, it's, you know, it's crazy that you t you demonstrated how to put condoms on a banana for us because I've not stopped thinking about it for fucking That's two years. <laughs> so funny. We had a hot health teacher ruled. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, and she and this was the late '90s, but she was like '80s hot, like business, yeah. like always stockings, heels, and like yeah. a, a pant, a skirt suit yeah. of some sort, and she, it just ruled. Yeah. yeah. And I guess. At the time, legally, she could not openly explain safe sex to us unless someone asked it. Really? Yeah, I guess that was like some company, uh, you know, uh, curriculum curriculum rule or some shit. Uh, I don't know. Of it course. was it was the nineties, and they were hoping we all got knocked up. I guess uh, as we're learning in twenty twenty two that they do not give a fuck. Um, I, she was like, you have to ask me to demonstrate how to put a condom on, and like our entire class was just like. <laughs> like, you, like, <laughs> looked through, we were, like, sweat with, like, cartoon sweat shooting off our heads. like Steam <laughs> coming out yeah. of your ears. <laughs> and I was yeah. just like, oh, this is a high. Like, and I was just like, I ha this has to happen. This has to happen. Were you the one that was <laughs> like, you need to put the condom on the banana? I was like, yeah. Well, because then she, she was like, I can't just. So if someone, say, wanted to understand how a condom is. And I was like. Um, yes, I am curious how a condom, like playing along to her yeah. game, I'm like, ah, yes, very curious. How would a condom go on a banana? And I have had put a condom on at this point in my sure. life, but I'm just like, do explain. Do explain, just please. Like, just watching her roll it down, I was just like, oh my God, oh my God. I'm, she has to know. She has to know. Of what she's doing, yeah. her power. It's like Wendy uh, Peppercorn from, or Pfeffercorn from uh, Sandlot. Yeah. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure in my high school we all had to put a condom on a banana. That's smart. I think, like, we all had to do it. That's some progressive-ass shit. We should have all had to do that. And I know. think I remember my health teacher being like, you need to squeeze out the air or something. And, like, I was just like, what? And that's never, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I haven't no I haven't worn one in, like, 20 years, but I can – I distinctly, re I've been with the same woman forever. So I was going to say, well, <laughs> to well, be fair, you're, I'm not, I've only slept yeah. with one person in those 20 years, but, uh, you know. You <laughs> Last time I put one on was when I was 15, but, you know, whatever. But my girlfriend at the time, and I don't, uh, maybe older, uh, maybe some other 40-year-olds had to do this. We were so concerned about holes being in the condom and getting pregnant that after the fact, I w she would make me go run water in it to see if any holes were there. Now, 
<laughs> that you know what's so <laughs> crazy. It's so crazy, and in hindsight, I'm like feeling. <laughs> yeah, you're like it's going it off up, my. And then you're like putting it underwater. I'm putting it underwater, and I'm like, oh, it's good. And then one time, I went away with her and her family for the weekend and left one, like a no. half filled condom, half filled with cum and water, on <laughs> on next to my bathroom sink and my father found it and called me and it's a dice roll it's a coin flip of how awful which parent finds it uh luckily my dad's dead now so i don't have to look him in the eye anymore uh but my mom would have been heartbroken by it like right. she, but my dad was just annoying about it so it was like what, what it, did he say johnny can't be leaving your fucking scum bags laid around the house like that's what he, my dad sounded like and he used the term scumbag that for is, in reference to a used wait, condom, is and that that's exactly what that means. I turns out that is the original definition of scumbag was a bag full of human scum. Oh, I think, my God. or at least according to my dad. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, no, he's not I mean, an unreliable that narrator. That would actually like <laughs> make sense. Scumbag, scumbag. Yeah, you're practically there. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, and that was brutal. And I was like, the second. I remember after we, we had sex a few, t like, you know, dozens of times like that, she was like, I don't think we need to do the water thing anymore. I was like, oh, thank you. You're like, thank God. God. Uh, it's crazy enough to have to get up right after sex and do anything. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> and you're like 15 and you're like, all right, I'm going to creep into your mom's bathroom and take <laughs> and this take condom off, off, run water in water. it, then uh, wrap it in toilet paper and hide it in the fucking garbage. I like, am, now I'm saying I'm famous for saying this on the podcast, <laughs> but- all high school sex is bad, and, like, Hell yeah. that is true. But I do think for straight boys, it's probably amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, the sh a sh straight boy oper operation of a heterosexual male's sexual organs is pretty straightforward. Straight forward. <laughs> yeah, it's like, look, it's there's a visible success. Yes. <laughs> You're like, I think you did the right thing. Here and also, end. it's just, like, as a girl, you're, like – figuring yourself out and you're like figuring out how to masturbate and you're figuring right. and out. And there's like weird, like, you know, body shame that goes into like sh sh share. Like for a guy, it's like, look at this weird thing hanging off my body. Right. And it's like, it's funny. And then it also sometimes does stuff that feels good. And it's like a woman's like, welcome to a complicated universe. Yeah. And you know, it's like, I barely understand it. You barely understand. You, you understand it even less than me. And I also think that like, in the probably forever until more recently, even though I'm still sure it happens, girls were always convinced that their pussy smelled. Yeah. Like that was a whole thing too. But we never talked about the fact that boys' balls fucking reek. Okay, I will give you that. But I'll say the girls, women, young girls being concerned that their vaginas smell is the exact same thing as young boys worried that their penis is too small. It's like, because yeah. it's like, it's not really a major issue. Right. It's not actually something that either But part, in your head, it's everything. But in your head, it's everything. And that's what makes it even more shameful to share or even more nerve wracking to share. Yeah. Where you're like, because I think that's, w women fear that judgment. I think men fear that. I think that's the same. Th and it's equally like, eventually you grow up to be like. Oh, I love whatever. your dick as it is, and you're like, I yeah. love the smell of your pussy as it is. <laughs> this it. is my advice to young high school kids. Hey, eventually you're gonna love the yeah. smell of pussy. Grow up and yeah. dig in, brother. And then you're gonna love the size of your dick. <laughs> Forty year old man. Yeah. Look, I got a medium sized dick, yeah. and I love the smell of pussy. Live That's your dreams. it. <laughs> That's good. That's positive. Yeah. <laughs> Did you do the thing um, in high school where you and your friends like compared your dick size to each other? No, not directly. Yeah. Um, the thing I did, the gross. I never get to ask this stuff. Yeah, it well with, this is with so fun. when Gabrus is on the pod, <laughs> yeah. he's forthcoming, <laughs> and he's old and he's old enough that this shit is like beyond statute yeah. of limitations. So yeah. I can tell you, uh, I never did the dick comparison thing, but the the late '90s thing that I did that I thought everyone did, and then it turns out no one was doing, was me and my friends. But with some of my friends, we would like all jerk off in the same room, but like. Watching porn? Yeah, we would put like one porn yeah. on the TV and then everyone would kind of go there. But there was still like a layer of like homophobia or like or heteronormativeness where we would be like, nobody looks at anybody. We're all under blankets, like separate yeah. blankets. And it's like, 
in hindsight, and then would you guys, that's like would you literally guys all be jerking off. You could hear each other jerking off. It was but then I don't remember you, the audio. When, I, yeah, yeah, but it was, I feel like when you come, you would you'd have to be quiet. It, it was weird. Like you could definitely <laughs> tell. You could definitely. T- well, also eventually people will be like, "All right, who wants to play video games now?" It's like, yeah, I think we all came. I mean, out. I think that's beautiful. <laughs> it's insane. And like I, I stood by that as such a normal thing. That on the drive to a, a brunch, this was only like eight years ago, we were driving to a friend's brunch and my wife, the story came up. Something about how like my wife who's similar age to me, she was like, masturbating was a th- her and her girlfriends, no one ever talked about it yeah. at the time. It wasn't like they weren't open about that. They are like, they eventually got to that point. But I was like, oh, dude, guys, we were jerking on th- in front of each other. And, and my wife's like, no one in my high school did that. I'm like, yeah, well, no one in your high school told you they did that. Yeah. And then so I'm like, everybody does that. <laughs> I'm like playing it up. So we walk into this brunch and Tiffany's like, uh, guys, John has a question he wants to ask everyone. <laughs> and I was like, OK, dudes, who here jerked off with all their friends in the same room in high school? And everyone was like, what, dude? A friend, <laughs> a friend of mine who's gay is like, yo, I'm gay and I haven't even done that. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. No, I'm sure more people would cop to it. Like, you know what? Write in to senior superlatives at gmail.com. Yeah, and let us know. If you could put classroom corner in the subject line. And then if you've jerked off in a room full of friends, let us know. Yeah, uh, actually put cum corner in the subject line. Yeah, it's cum corner. (laughs) The way you know is it goes right to spam. I mean, yeah, it does. I don't know. I had a friend where she and I would masturbate uh, next to each other. Were you were you open? Like, did you talk to friends about the fact that you guys ma- that you masturbated or that, no? No. <laughs> Interesting. No, we didn't. But we also, I think, were like, that was kind of my first time being like, oh, I think I also could like girls too. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. It was very horny. I was just, it was like a horny thing. But we weren't. We yeah, we were, we were just like masturbate next to each other yeah i i did the exact same thing with dudes not just not close but the thing is like we wouldn't watch anything Ooh. It, like we wouldn't watch porn it was just like silent next to each other interesting yeah interesting very very strange did you have weird habits like because talking to a lot of my girlfriends early on were like the th- they were they were like masturbation adjacent for their first like few it's like oh yeah i was th- waiting for the bath to fill and i slid all the way down and like the faucet was hitting me right and that's when i and i was like oh for boys it's like i kept touching my hard penis until it until exploded something yeah, happened. And i was like whoa that's what happens i started masturbating so young that I that like they I say psychologically too. is like a self soothing thing. It's a lot of kids that come from Stop like sucking fucked your thumb up. And yeah, just start jamming. A <laughs> lot of like kids that come from like tense households, <laughs> like fighting parents, start masturbating younger. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I can co-sign that. Yeah, <laughs> a little and bit. truly, <laughs> like when I was like talking, I had one therapist where she was talking to me. She was like, "Yeah, it's like very normal for." kids that come from like high stress homes like you just like primally like figure out how to do it and like like, that's kind of it was a bathtub situation for me but like I don't know how I put two and two together it just kind of like happened and then I think my mom had to know what I was doing because then I went through a phase of like hating to take baths and showers to them being like I need to take a bath I need to take another. Yeah, yeah, I I didn't get everything off. That reminds me of what I found my uh, my little brother. You know, I shared a bathroom with both my younger brothers, and when I was older, I I was like, "Hey, little brother, um, you don't need." lotion in the shower yeah <laughs> like, uh, that is for post shower so everyone knows what you're doing with that yeah 100 <laughs> percent. put it back on the shelf you know you're not getting away with what you think you're getting away with here brother. so yeah. funny um were you okay so we're like a good test taker yeah. we're a class clown yeah we, we have a girlfriend i'm like i like matured early in like like my mom used to like my mom and her, her friends used to joke that like i had like a brief, like when I was a little kid, I had like glasses and a briefcase because I, I guess I spoke more like an adult and right. I had, I had, like I understood adult references. Like I watched, was allowed to watch whatever I wanted right. early on in life because no one was around. Right. Not like because my parents blessed me with like yeah, a yeah. creativity. It was more like you're in the basement, yeah, no you one's can watching do what you're whatever watching. you want. Yeah, exactly. What did you watch? I watched, uh, 
every time we got a free HBO trial, I watched HBO from like yeah the entire t- as much as I possibly could. Real sex, dude. The I think I I taught myself edging based on free yeah. H- HBO weekends because it would just be like. Uh, brief nudity or sexual content, yeah. I'd be like, all right, well, I'm going to just hang out here until... And then most sexual content in the 90s in those movies was like psychosexual thrillers yeah. or like like a, my, the murderer ripping the woman's blouse off. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> like in hindsight, I don't think I did myself a, a service jerking off to all that. No, up. of <laughs> course, but all of us were fed that. I it's <laughs> like, it's, it's so real. Oh, okay, wait, we need to go to a break. What? I'm just, you you toss the sign. We're talking psychosexual thrillers. I'm going to edge <laughs> of my listeners right now. Yeah, just keep it going. Yeah, we'll be back in the yeah. break soon we'll, enough. We'll I hope back. you like plant people or yeah. whatever we got today. <laughs> Indeed, we are. No, I mean, all of those movies made me so horny constantly. Yeah, like, I can't believe I was watching, like, Jade, you know, and it's just like, oh, this, like, he fucks this woman in a parking <laughs> lot, and I'm like, that's exactly what it's going to be like for me. Yeah, or even, like, Basic Instinct, ba- something uh, like yeah. that, where you're just like, yeah, sure, I'm never wearing underwear. Yeah, well, it, it's like, well, I can't wait till that happens to me. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like, like, what? <laughs> and even if she's like, like, I remember distinctly being a kid and being like, I would let Sharon Stone murder me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I was just like, getting laid was just so, such a foreign concept and so thrilling that, like, in shows and movies, when a character would blow it, it yeah. would, like, sh- affect me big time. Like, when a guy when a guy would be like, no, th- like, uh, admonish a woman in a mo- like, a, a pu- push, push a woman's advances away, I'd be like... Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Yeah. Do you have any idea? I have no idea what it feels like. And you're turning it down? You can't. Like, uh, Married with Children is a good example of, like, I had such a crush on Peg Bundy. And yeah. And Al would be like, yikes, I can't have sex with her. And I'd be like, what's wrong with you, man? You gotta, <laughs> you gotta fuck Peg, please. Yeah. yeah. And I was just so caught up in all that growing up. It yeah. was crazy. Like, I, I, I guess that's. Something I could tie that to now is that movies and TV clearly had such a power over me. Oh, my God. Yes. And I obviously, like, am still a huge fan of them. And possibly because I found my sexual thrills in them. Yeah. Or I think also that was my babysitter and my group of friends for a long time was, like, TV and movies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's all – you, like, you would just be like, this is amazing. And then you yeah. would, like, quote – movies to your friends that or was such a thing that doesn't happen anymore no because it's too much shit yeah <laughs> Every, everyone just quotes monoculture like some meme. doesn't exist yeah, exactly it's just marvel movies now i used to do eddie murphy delirious like sure. when i was like 11 and it's like insanely offensive insanely and my f- uncles would all be like john i'm like mr gi joe swimming underwater gonna find out where the bubbles came from and i'm like doing like a black voice and everything at like 11 years old my family's like losing it and I'm, I'm like loving the idea of like adult TV and movies let you feel like you were that was something grown ups did it felt like there's a comedian who has a joke about how he was watching he went to rush hour <laughs> and that he would just quote um, Chris um Tucker. yeah Chris Tucker like the whole entire time <laughs> and it's like yeah that's Simpsons quotes. Like, if you just quote, like, that's how boys in my school talk to each other. Oh, in like, high school? Yeah. I feel like all boy, all, like, straight, popular boys would speak to each other via movie quote. Yes. It was all Simpsons, all, like, uh, Dumb and Dumber. Uh, like, Ned at the Roxbury or, yes, like, something exactly. like that. Amelia! Yeah, yeah. It's all that. <laughs> non, that was me in college, which maybe means I was, I'm even more immature. No. But I think it just came out later in my life. I. But we used to just literally be at the clubs in college going, Amelia! Yeah, just quoting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was, like, when, uh, why am I, bl- when Old School came out. I was like, oh, my God, if I hear one more teenage boy quote that fucking movie. Fill it up again. Just. Milk was the wrong choice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, Anchorman. Anchorman, Milk is the wrong choice. Lanolin. Lanolin. Yeah. Mahogany. All of that. (laughs) Um, Now, you did just come out with a show. Correct. 101 Places to Party Before You Die. Yes, indeed. On True TV. Correct. 
Um, Set your family's DVRs, the, people. I'm sure you don't have cable if you're uh, watching a podcast. <laughs> so do yourself a favor <laughs> and set your parents' DVR. Set your work DVR. And this leads me to my next question. Were you partying in high school? Yes. I was uh, – in college, I pretty much – was Van Wilder and believed myself to be Van Wilder. Where did you go to college? I went to a, a, a Catholic college called Marist College. In yes. Like, it's like in Poughkeepsie near Vassar. And it's like a small liberal arts school. And uh, I considered myself like Van Wilder. I like won the Mr. The male beauty pageant. I was on the comedy group. like, And it was a small enough campus that I, everyone... You had a golf cart. Yeah, everyone knew me, and but not everyone liked me. Right. Most people hated me, because, but I was... Uh, curating that mm -hmm. i was like <laughs> i'm the guy who wears the crazy sweater every day right. i'm the guy who's got who's streaking i'm the guy in pajamas again you know uh, i'm the guy in pajamas <laughs> again i like you know was cool with my fancy pajamas and but in high school i was a little bit of a dork like i wasn't in the cool kids crew like they were my friends but i didn't like hang out with them because right. i just w wasn't into the same stuff as them but once high school started and we were drinking every single weekend, yeah. every single Friday and Saturday night, starting in ninth grade, all the way through high school. And then by the time I went away to college, I didn't realize that not everyone had been doing that. I had that same experience. And then you're like freshman year and your roommate is like wasted and crying and you're like, what the fuck is your problem? Yeah. I haven't done that shit since sophomore year. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, get it what? together. Yeah. Rock it. Come on, man. Yeah. I, this is my fifth year drinking shots. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm 17. Yeah. <laughs> no, I remember seeing people freshman year of college getting so fucked up. Dude, and I would be guys like, what hysterical you... crying, just like sitting down crying and Crazy. shit. Crazy. <laughs> so drunk. Like, like you know other people are around, like that kind of behavior. Yeah. And like, it's just funny. Like, from high school, you, you I like did all that already. Totally. I did all the, I already pissed myself. I right. already like, opened up my drawer and peed into my, a lot of pee stuff. You Barf. Know, obviously. Yeah. Tons of barfing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Barf. Puke and rally became a thing in oh, high yeah. school where you'd purposely make yourself puke after one or two shotguns, you'd be like, or funnels, you'd be like, I can't. Like, I knew drink, I, I knew drinking games. Yeah. And, and, like, my high school was weird. Like, the cool kids my freshman year all had older siblings yes. who were seniors or juniors, and that's, like, how they got granted. Cool. Yeah, they got, like, grandfathered into the party scene. Uh, and by the party scene, we mean a... Uh, junior high, that the special needs school at night, we, we would just go because it had three exits, so the cops couldn't cover all three. Wait, what? You would go and drink in a high school? A at, at a school, like not in it, but like hanging on the playground equipment and like all around in the in the field because there was enough exits that the cops couldn't, including one that went into a creek, so the cops couldn't cover every exit because we were chased by the cops every week. Yeah, too. yeah, sure. And like tackled, like we were 14 years old. I remember a friend of mine got like tackled by a cop when he was like 14 and we were like, what the fuck is wrong with cops? It's like, crazy. Yeah. I know when cops would cops would really want to fuck with you when you're in high school. Yeah, and there and I like they drive into the play, uh, playground where we're all partying and watch us scatter. Win. That's like what cops are supposed to do. Get out of your car and like throw us off the fence as we're climbing away. And I'm never going to respect you ever again. Sorry, Nassau County PD. No. <laughs> that's crazy. Wait, you briefly grazed over your style in high school. You mentioned a Star Wars backpack. Okay, yeah. So I, I, I can comfortably say that my style in high school is very similar to my style now. Okay. I was a shorts, Hawaiian shirt, beach bum, flip-flops kind of guy. My, from like the age of 15. Which I feel like is not Long Island. It's not really Long Island, but it is like seventh and eighth grade for me. So this is like mid early to mid 90s, mid nineties, like Stussy, Rusty, Quicksilver, yeah. and Billabong are all kind of cool. And yeah. I'm a, and I go to the beach every single day. And as a kid, my, I was saying earlier, my dad worked nights, my, he would, to tire us out in the summer, he would just take us from the beach every day from like 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yeah. So the beach was like a big part of my thing, and I was like a boogie boarder and, yeah. a, and a surfer. So that, so my style was always that, but I was a bit of a nerd as well. And like the Phantom Menace countdown, like uh, Phantom Menace came out my junior year of high school, uh, and I wore a backpack that count that said 
Phantom Menace coming 100 days, and then the next day I would have one that said 99. I would just keep really? taking it out of my notebook and putting it on my bag. So that was what I meant by Star Wars <laughs> backpack. But I had like a Kermit the Frog keychain that hung down. You know, I, I, I like my car was really quirky. I had like a mannequin head in the back. I had like a baby on board sticker. Like I was, I was. What do you mean you had a mannequin head in the back? I had a mannequin head taped to the back seat with like sunglasses and a fake beard on it. Like, uh, like I was always that driving. That would scare the shit out of me. It scared the shit out of so many people. It fucking ruled. I, like I just love, I would always do, like I, I truly was figuring myself out in a way, but I knew that I was obnoxious. Like yeah. I was always obnoxious. I was always making big choices and wanting to get reactions out of people. So that was reflected in my fashion sense. And uh, I, I, it's no longer a weird sense of fashion, but at 40, it is disarming, I think, for some people for me to have, like, my thighs, toes, and, you know, like, chest out like this. Whatever. You're just living your life, honey. Thank you. Here you are, especially Thank in you. Southern California. Fuck. We yeah. have much bigger problems. Yes, exactly. We have yes. much bigger problems. Um, I have to know, is there one, like, quintessential high school story that sticks out in your brain as being like, wow, that is really truly the essence of my high school experience Ooh, yeah that's interesting um a lot of a lot of quintessential high school experience so one that comes to mind is me and some friends played the saltine game which is where you chew saltines and if you eat two and then first person to whistle wins it's very hard to whistle after eating a saltine because your mouth is dry and chunks yeah. are in it and we did it, and we were having fun, and, you know, obviously some saltines are flying around, yeah. and we're making a mess, and it's like six of us, and we're laughing and having, like, a great time. And then we got in trouble and got sent to the principal for making a mess. We go in there, and the principal gives us Saturday detention, gives us breakfast club detention. It's a Friday. We got to come in the next day. My parents are so mad at me and the school about this. Yeah. That they come with me. And then it turns out like three of the other kids' parents were like, and then like it's one of those things where you're like, my mom and dad are defending me and they're like, Saturday's our one day off where we don't have to take this fucking kid. Like, yeah. you know, it was like mostly about their lives and yeah. schedules. And I, I was mean, like, that's oh. such an inconvenience. It's insane. Imagine your kids like, I know we were supposed to go to the beach on Saturday, but can you drop me off at school so I can sit yes, for three sit hours there? in trouble? Yeah. I'm like, no. And, and what the who the fuck is that for? Also, by the way, you know who's the most pissed in that scenario? The teacher. Yeah, who's got to come in on a Saturday? To come and watch in on a me. Saturday and supervise. It's so fucked up. Oh, here here's a quintessential Gabris high school story that hits me along the same lines. In my junior year or my sophomore year, in the yearbook, I'm in the photo with the cafeteria staff because I used to. I think it was my junior year because I had second and third period off. And I would work third period in, like, at the line, like, at the register. Like, the ladies all loved me. Because I That's so I was, funny. like, the flirty kid yeah. who would, like, talk. And if you're giving me chicken patties and chicken nuggets, yeah. you're, getting, you're getting an extra wink You're like, hey, two. sweetheart, <laughs> yeah. why don't you slap another one on there? And I'm like, come on, Linda. What do you yeah. do? Charge me for doubles today? Come on. <laughs> like, uh, I, and so then I started helping out back there in exchange for, like, free food and stuff. That's was it good? It was f I I have issues with food and it makes me feel comfort so I to me it was the best. Well, I also I didn't have... get a lot of food at home. Like we didn't have like my dad worked nights and my mom would just like make pasta with sauce every night. Right. Yeah. yeah. I get that. So I... like getting like a chicken sandwich or like a Salisbury steak or a cheeseburger was like yeah. insane. Like that was so cool. It felt like you felt like even though now in hindsight, like kids were like, "Oh, school lunch sucked." To me, I was like, "This is a dream come true." It's like a dollar eighty for yeah. like a, a fucking bread, turkey, and gravy. This plate fucking of rolls. food. Hell, fucking yeah. I have deep nostalgia for crinkly fries and chicken nuggets. Oh, crinkly fries were the fucking it's best. So Squirt good. the ketchup in the weird, yeah. pop, weird corner weird of the styrofoam. Corner of the, yeah, yeah, it's like it's <laughs> so good. And I also have really. When I think about like my food, like taste memory or like sense memory, whatever, a cold Three Musketeers bar, like the pool that I used to go to growing up, you could buy frozen Three Musketeers bars. I don't know why, but it was, I know it was always like the snack 
booth was always run by like some hot high schooler. Yeah. And oh. just like the, and, or, and the lifeguards were hot. Everyone was just hot. And they would have these frozen Three Musketeers bars. And I thought that was like normal, but like nowhere else I've ever gone has ever It's so had, funny because like, Three Musketeers is probably my, my least favorite when I oh, was a kid. Oh, me too. And now it's, I don't, I didn't want it normal, right. but Frozen. Frozen's a victory. It was like a cool, like custardy thing happening. Anyway, we're, I, you know, I could talk about snacks. What was your go to snack in high school? Oh, I, I, my go-to snack in high school was unfortunate, and I don't like them anymore, is Cheez-Its, because mm. they were, I think they were on sale for the yeah. 90s, because my mom had them all the time in huge boxes. But my go-to school snack was, and this is maybe Long Island as fuck, but bagel with cream cheese, mm. few Doritos, uh, either nacho cheese or Cool Ranch, and then you crunched them down. Uh. And so it was like a Dorito that sounds and cream cheese delicious. sandwich. delicious. It was stellar. Put that on a salt bagel, and you're like, this is not food for consumption. No, but it's, it's like a pretzel perfect. with melted cheese and more pretzels on it. It's disgusting. Uh, um, oh, my God. <laughs> knock, 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 knock. Is that a door knock I hear? Oh, no. Why, yes, it is. Oh, my God. It looks like you found yourself in the high school guidance counselor's office. And oh, guess what? No. I'm your guidance counselor. I bet if I was your guidance counselor in high school, though, you would have. Like, I would have gone to Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, exactly. If you were my guidance counselor and I was a 16-year-old boy, I'd be like, you, you, what, what do you want me to major in? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got you. Because <laughs> I had a hot guidance counselor. Shout out, Miss Parker. Really? Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I was like college yeah. let's do it yes you're like yes miss parker i would be like she'd be like uh well do you want to come sit down at my like you know you'd sit at their desk yeah. next to them and i'd be like uh-huh yeah come talk about college yeah and i had no i had no care about where i went to school or any of that shit but i would sit and talk to miss parker for that's i'd so be like funny. yeah i don't know culinary school like saying anything just to keep the conversation going <laughs> like, i'm thinking the french culinary institute <laughs> yeah. in you do you know, have any New connections York? there yeah. your, at this long island public high school that's what i'm thinking um <laughs> You know, this, this section of the pod, we like to kind of rectify a wrongdoing of the past. You can use this time however you want. If there's a nemesis that you want to say fuck you to, if you want to apologize to someone, if you just want to rid yourself of any, you know, lingering high school trauma, we, we get rid of it in this section, then you never think about it again. Ooh, okay. We do not have. <laughs> yeah, we you look. We could bang out six episodes right now yeah. if you want. Just keep them, keep them in storage, and drop I them. I probably should. <laughs> and just drop them later on. Like, I will. When you're on vacation, be like, "Fuck, put out one of those yeah. Gabrus ones where he was crying about <laughs> some trauma he had." Uh, but uh, oh shit, yeah. Okay, okay. I've got, I've got. This is kind of maybe a little more. Um, uh, macro uh, or uh, a little bit more of a macro complaint than anything else but it goes back to when you say guidance counselor I think about this I wish I was told like you know you can go to school in California or Hawaii like right. I like no it was not even thought of it was just like oh it has to be three hours away so my mom could visit me you right. know what I mean it was like she and my mom chose all the schools because I was 17 and apathetic towards everything so I was like oh I don't care oh I don't care I don't care and then in hindsight that's where I would end up spending four years of my life and I am 40 now and I just finished paying off school two years ago right. and it's like I paid for it for my whole life and I didn't even really choose it right and it feels fucking whack and you're like wait I wouldn't have paid that money to spend four years in Poughkeepsie right yeah well I remember it was truly like right after college I was interning uh, no I was, I was a PA in New York City and I was living at my mom's house in Long Island I was commuting in and out and I walked past a bar and they were playing all these college football games, which is something that's very common, but new to me when I was like, young. And I look and I go, University of Hawaii? Yeah. And I was like, they have a college in Hawaii? And I was like, and I went to Poughkeepsie, New York? What the f Fuck. Yeah. And I was just like so blinded by how fun college was because college ruled because I had, I lived a very uh, sheltered, grounded, controlling life for my parents. So yeah. getting away to college, I totally blossomed and totally never went back. I, I lived at home for three months after college because I right. came home and I was like, oh, no, no, no. You're no, like, no. fuck this. No. Um, so my, my beef would be with like uh, – you. 
tell me, let's just like my mom was like, you're going to go to SUNY Binghamton and be a lawyer. And I was like, OK, <laughs> like, right. I, I didn't want to do that. Like, let's just like and, and now I feel like you hear kids like eh, their parents are so like they're going to send them to YouTube training camp or whatever. Right. You know? And you hear about all this bullshit. But at the same time, I was just like, maybe let's just dig in a little on the kids, what they want to do. It's <laughs> so funny because like I went to a really competitive like a really academically competitive high school where it was like very normal to send multiple people every grade to multiple Ivy Leagues. And it was like very hoity-toity. And like if you didn't get into a fancy school, you literally felt like a dumb loser. Like oh, no. I, re I remember being like, oh, <laughs> someone got into Trinity College. Idiot. Loser, you know what I yeah. mean? Half of my school went to – I would say a third went to Nassau Community College, a third didn't go to college. Yeah. Then a third went to like state schools or fancier I private mean, schools nearby. I did my freshman year of college at the University of Arizona. And the, my school was like, wow, this is the first time anyone has ever gone to such a school. Meaning like I was so, my GPA was so bad <laughs> that they were like, this is a, the dumbest girl to ever graduate. This I mean, that's a great school. school to go to for one year. It's well, plenty. Well, <laughs> I. Your nasal cavity can't handle four I, years. <laughs> the whole, the body cavity can't handle four years. I did have that feeling though, where I was like, I wanted to go to USC. I was like, I want to be. I want to have like the movie experience of of college. Right. I was like, I want to go to a school with like football and like it's big and there's like you know people on skateboards. Yeah, and you and, go like, to like a party that has a crazy theme. Yeah, and everyone, there's 200 people dressed as blank. And right, it's cool. Yeah, and I instead did it's golf pros and tennis, tennis hoes. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, it's fun. like okay. <laughs> I now see we're just figuring out ways to make women dress or slutty. It's, um, it. yeah. Or it's Something, something in CE hose. That was another one. Oh, yeah. We had like business, business men, business like bros and CE hose or something <laughs> like that. It's so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> just like, just anything with a hoe. <laughs> but then, like, very rhymable word. Very rhymable. Uh, yeah. But then I did a year of it and then I was like, oh. And then I immediately transferred to New York City and went to art school. <laughs> so it was just like, <laughs> I was so happy that I at least was able to get it out of my oh, system. That's another one too. Just the idea of NYU. It's like my, everyone. I was doing com like I was a huge fan of comedy in high school, and I was doing the talent show and hosting stuff, uh, hosting the radio program at you know, the morning announcements. Like I clearly was into, and no one was like, "Hey, you know, you can go to school in New York City oh, yeah. and not even go anywhere, yeah. you know, and like commute you can go into the forty train. minutes away." Yeah, and I wouldn't even have to like live there. I could right. lived in my mom's house and just been in the city every day. And I was like, "This is shit that no one." And it's all because my mom was like. The city is dangerous. I'm not. She, my mom didn't fly at the time, so she wasn't going to visit me if my right. school was too far away. So it was like all, and I was just like, "That's so whack." That my entire and look, I met my wife there. <laughs> like, there you go. Can't really bitch about that. No. Too. Can't really bitch. I'm in so in my head about touching this microphone. You're in mic that jail. I am truly like debilitatingly You're scared. In mic jail. I'm like my hands have been like this this whole time. We're almost done. Just pin an Italian behind a fucking thing like I this know. and be like, hey, don't hit it, but yeah, talk as much as possible. Yeah, don't talk with your hands. <laughs> don't talk with your hands. I'm trying not to. No, it is hard. I think that I definitely feel this way in my high school guidance counselor section, where it's just like. Sometimes to my high school, I'm just like, fuck the adults who didn't foster my talent and didn't see that I was special. I, I mean, and it's so fucking, it's like, everyone's like, oh man, kids get so much attention these days. It's like, well, I, I'm not mad at them for I'm happy. Yeah. I would have liked some though too, yeah. I, just, just go like, like, I talk about this all the time, like my friends who were like good artists who could like draw, yeah. you know what I mean? In the 90s, that was, like, gay. Right. <laughs> it was like, oh, you, like, like art? Like, your parents would be like, I don't know about that. Well, that was that. also, yeah. like, peak comedy movie time where the punchline of every single joke was the F word. Right, yes. And honestly, not even comedy movies. No. Like, non-comedy movies would be like, there'd be a movie about, like, a uh, like a kid coming of age and, like, the bullies would call him the F word. Yeah. It's like, this is fucking insane. I was watching um, The Girl Next Door two days ago randomly. Uh, the Elisha Cuthbert. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. She was, still is, so hot. Absolute smoke show. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. But I was kind of shocked in like all of these movies that I watched how 
frequent that word is just said constantly. It's, just, it's in like it's in it's in kids movies like Monster Squad. They like call a kid. There's like fat shaming, oh. uh, fat shaming rampant movies, homophobic ramping in all, all the movies we grew up watching. And I was a fat kid with the word gay in his last name. Well, remember, <laughs> uh, remember, um, um, heavyweights. Yes. <laughs> that movie would never be made now. No, about fat kids. Yeah, going that. to fat camp and then having Ben Stiller. I mean, that when he's like doing pull-ups on the branch, it is like crazy, but. And that's yeah. like Paul Feig and Apatow and all yeah. that. It's like one of their early movies. It's so funny. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, it's cr like, I guess that's my big overall frustration is just like how many kids, and, and I was a white, middle-class, cishet, Man, right, and I felt unfulfilled by my high school and unfostered and unprotected in my high school experience. So God only knows what that's like for everybody else. Yeah. But like uh, teachers, you, you're expected to do way too much. Way I understand much. you are completely overworked. My families are all teachers. Like I totally get it, but at the same time, it's like maybe like the freak with the blue hair in the back who everyone's kicking his chair. Maybe like let's just. Read one of his poems. Yeah, <laughs> See, it's like, like humor. <laughs> yeah, let's just humor him. Yeah. I will say the other day I was in uh, I was in Greenwich, Connecticut, visiting my husband's, visiting my sister in law. We were getting ice cream, and like a pack of teenage boys came. That's like clearly where they all link, you know, before they like go out and they're like, I will overhear them like talking about girls, talking about pot, talking about like all this stuff, and like there was one cocky little fuck that there I is. just was like <laughs> I clocked him and like I wanted to go up to him and be like you think you're hot shit you're not fucking anyone or anything and then I'm like oh no I'm a <laughs> deranged 30 something that he would be like uh you fucking old bitch <laughs> I know well that's like the most humbling thing ever because yeah. because you can't articulate in the time you're like no you don't understand I'm even considered cool yeah. for 30 somethings in LA yeah. okay no 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 I'm a loser you're yeah, right you're no right. I am talking to you about this it's you're right. it's so that is so fucking real kids can humble you oh like my I like t was swimming with my nephew the other day and like I'm a great swimmer but I popped my shirt off and he goes Uncle Manny why is your belly so big <laughs> and I was like uh cuz I like to eat food he's like I like food too and my belly's not that big you I was like just I was like okay you shut the fuck up yeah <laughs> okay okay so I really wanted to go up to this kid being like I will fucking punch you in the fucking face dude funny you say that one time at the mall Roosevelt Field Mall um I was walking around with friends as you were like you know the mall was the babysitter that yeah. day yeah I'll drop you off I'll pick you up at 4 p.m. here's eight dollars like uh <laughs> Eat as much free bourbon chicken from the sample guy as you possibly can. Uh, and there was, I was obsessed with like the Jenny McCarthy, Anna Nicole Smith type at the time. They yeah. were very popular. That was, those were the posters on my wall. And uh, there was a woman who looked like a, a busty, like Jenny McCarthy type hanging out outside of Spencer Gifts. And she had on like a wife pleaser shirt, an A, t -sh an a shirt. And uh, she, and I was like with, oh, with a, colored bra underneath which yeah, was like yeah. very popular in the late uh, mid I still late do it now I, I still am a huge fan like a day glow bra <laughs> yep. underneath a white tank solid it's big, r big red yeah. bra black bra under a white yeah. tank shit hits for young Gabrus, old Gabrus, every Gabrus. and uh I was just like staring at this woman and she's like and she's like playing with like a big plastic knife <laughs> and I'm like you know all of my uh fan everything I've uh has sex in it at this point to me is violent and or yeah. real sex. So it's like fat clowns farting on balloons <laughs> or like a woman who's a murderer yeah. or a temptress or who's going to be murdered. And I'm just like staring at her like, holy shit, this is like, and I'm just like across the mall, just like fully like, you know, uh, Vaseline lens, yeah. like just like falling in love with her. And, and I see like, I just come to and she's like walking right at me and I'm just like panicked. And she has the plastic knife in her hand. She jams it into my chest and goes, didn't anyone in your life teach you not to stare? Oh, my God. And I was like, ha, ha. And that's also hot because she's <laughs> Well, I was like, I, didn't wanna, I, don't wanna, I didn't want her to hear it at the time. Yeah. But I was like, well, guess who's going to, you know, try yeah. to re re uh, recreate this many 
times in his life. <laughs> but it was crazy. I was like, oh, no. Do I like getting in trouble now? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, is this my king yeah. forever? Yeah, you get in the car. Your mom's yeah. like, how's the mall? And you're like, good. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm growing. <laughs> Um, if you could go back in time and give your high school self any advice, what would it be? I'd be like, dude, you are not even fat yet. <laughs> <laughs> you are so in your head about being overweight. You won't take your shirt off. You don't go in the pool at the pool party. And you are will only get fatter. <laughs> Relish in this now. Like, uh, uh, like. I have the confidence to be, you know, uh, in, with my body now, but I didn't have it when I was that age, and I, I was brutalized for it, and I was not even, like, yeah. and I was just, like, in hindsight, like, it's one of those humbling, like, a friend of mine sent a picture of all of us in high school, like, a couple years ago, and he was like, he's like, damn, we looked young there, and it was like, we're all hanging out by a car in, like, tank tops after yeah. a surf, and we all look great. And I'm like, and my buddy's like, and Gabrus, we used to call you fat then. It's man. crazy. And I know, I'm like, I know, I hate myself. Like, I can't believe. And, and I was so caught up in that. I was so caught up in that that I like lost sight of like life. Like, I missed out on like, you know, a, a, a girl. I would be like, oh, I have a crush on this girl. We hang out all the time in friend groups, and we're always like going to roller rinks together and right. the ice skating rink. It's like. But there's no way this could possibly be more than friends because I have little puffy nipples and a gut at right. fucking 16 years old. It's like if I would have just gotten over that, I could have re really blossomed. I, I, it eventually happened for me. But, but it's hard. I, yeah. I think that uh, male body shame is like very brutal too and not discussed enough. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think a lot of people talk about it because th there's also like – male body shame complaint shame like yeah. you know what i mean like that it becomes like this spiral of like shut the fuck up bro right. who cares you know what i mean or like you like if you went to like your dad or I, if i went to let me use my own let me, if i went to my dad and was like dad everyone at school is calling me fat he's like well eat less jog around the block do some push-ups yeah and be like yeah i don't know if it's that i think i need to <laughs> like mentally learn yeah. how to deal with this but like I wish I could instill that the confidence I have now in my own body in cuz I just missed out on opportunities cuz yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and not again not exclusively heterosexuality related No like a lot of them were. like just going to a pool party and not being in your head and like right. going to the beach and not being in your head and like just other things like that It's funny you mentioned it earlier you, I got a l job lifeguarding when I was 16 cuz so of fun. like growing up going to pools and yeah. seeing and then learning that the uh, it's one of the few jobs you you can do at 16 instead of 17. That's kind of that serious. So I, you know, took the lifeguard test, and then yeah. I was hanging out with the hot lifeguards, and I was yeah. like, oh, this is the it's life. It's legit. Still the best job I've ever had is a beach lifeguard. Absolutely. And I get paid to party. Yeah. And lifeguarding was more fun. There you go. I didn't have to fucking tweet, please watch me lifeguard this Thursday night. Because <laughs> if you don't, they're going to take the job yeah. away from me. And then fucking, it's just, if you don't save someone, you get fired. And <laughs> in, in entertainment, you have to, like, even once you've made the show, no, it's you your job to, like, go around and fix people's TV. It turns out my job is to reply, not sure how to watch it without cable. Hold on. Let me ask my IT guy. Like, this entertainment business has got me and fucked. Also, by the way, when you're 16 years old and you don't say, rescue someone, they die. <laughs> and then you're 16 and you need to deal with that for the rest of your life. Dude, being a, a young lifeguard was really fun because it was like a lot of – it's a very fun job, but it's enough responsibility that you feel like an Important. adult doing it. And yeah. like – your coworkers can be 20 somethings. You know, you're like 16. Yeah. And there's like a 21 year old girl who, uh, it's one piece uniforms, but when she's down, she's got to take that off and tan with yeah. her bikini. And you're just like, <laughs> you're just a 16 year old in the lifeguard chair. Like, yeah. we are equals. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Sweat flying down your face. So sunburnt. Oh, um, I have to know did you go to prom? I did go to prom. What uh, did you wear? Um, my <laughs> this is my junior year. I went with my uh, to the senior prom with my girlfriend, who was a senior at the right. time, and uh, I wore a zoot suit. Love. Um, and we took swing dancing lessons. It's the most 1999 sentence zoot ever. Zoot suit riot. Uh, throw back throw a back bottle, bottle of beer. beer. <laughs> yeah, at that. Uh, and we uh, 
swing danced at her at uh, her prom and did a routine that we practiced that with, is with so a teacher. Cute. Yep. I wore a hat and the gold chain and everything like that. And then my senior year, I went with my friend's sister, sort of as a friend, uh, just to bring someone because mm-hmm. she was like, because I was gonna go to the prom by myself with like two of my buddies, and yeah. she was like, "You can't do that. I'll go." With you. <laughs> and I was like, "No, it's fine." She's like, "It will be fun. I'll go with you." And I was like, "Okay, fine. Let's go." And it was really fun. I'm glad I brought her. Uh, thank you, Jenny. But uh, I wore a mint green, like Dumb and Dumber ruffled tux. Yeah. Cute. Yeah. I was that kid. That's uh, who you nice, think I was, though. Yeah. With, like, my frosted tips and I was super tan from lifeguarding. I looked That's, crazy. I want a picture. I'll scare off a picture please. and send it your way, please. That's I know so it exists. so funny. Also, the fact that you took swing dancing lessons and went in a zoot suit to do. And it's not my grades prom, so no one. Like, I am, like, <laughs> I'm, like, standing there with, like, a hat on and, like, baggy pinstripe pants. And I'm, like, let me know when it's our turn to dance, shunt. I am keep almost using people's names. That is so <laughs> funny. Cherry Pop and Daddy, Cherry Big Pop, Dad Voodoo Daddy. Squirrel Why do they zippers? all have daddy in it? Because I think daddy was like a swing term. Yeah. It felt like. The movie Swingers came out. Yeah. You're like, oh, I love swing music. And the movie doesn't really t- connect to that yeah. except for soundtrack wise. Uh, yeah. That was, that was very. Oh, and my senior year of prom. Natalie Portman was also in the same building at her prom because she's from Long Island as well. And we were big enough Star Wars nerds that we were like, we have to find her. Did you? <laughs> no. We were, they were like, <laughs> you guys can't be walking around here. It's like three kids in like mint green tuxedos being like, is this the Manhasset prom or Syosset, wherever she went? We were like asking around, is this Syosset prom? Like they're like, what? Get out of here. <laughs> Like the most conspicuous outfits possible. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, what was your senior superlative? I was a uh, class clown, surprising, surprising no one. I've had this energy and this dynamic and the love of my own voice since I was like 14. So That's so sweet. I, I brought this. And I also prided myself on making the teachers laugh because I thought that was like a bigger victory. It is. And it That's is. That's the win. Yeah. I can easily turn around and just make like a fart noise and, you know, get these yeah. four apes going ape shit behind yeah. me. But when I could get the teacher, the best is when the teacher, like a teacher has to be like, <laughs> Now, Gabrus, like, you know, yeah. like, and they, every teacher called me Gabrus, too. So That's it was like, really funny. Like, oh, Gabrus. <laughs> that was like the best. Or when me. they don't want to laugh yep. and they're, when someone's trying to be like, it's not this is not funny. Yeah. <laughs> when someone's just trying to hold it back, it's. It's good. It feels good. And then you know that feeling. And you're like, you learn to love the tough crowd. And like knowing the, the victory of winning over the tough crowd is that much big. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that prepared me for life more than anything else. Of like oh, for sure. Disarming situations when the lady at the mail counter is like furious with you. And you're just like, but you have no idea. I'm going to be so cute and so funny and yeah. so flirty. Because I'm <laughs> trying to hate me this whole time. I come from a family of loud, dangerous alcoholics. So I'm used to <laughs> cooling the situation. Self-soothe over in the corner. Yeah, real quick. I'm starting to jack up in the corner of this mail office. Uh, this is actually pretty common. I talked to a therapist about it. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me, please. You have to. <laughs> what a treat it has been to have you on the pod. Dude, this was a pleasure. Thank you so much please for having me. Please come back for uh, Classmates Come Corner. Oh, I will. I, I already emailed you a hundred times. Please do. <laughs> I'm like, here's another photo of me and my friends jerking off. It's like, no, yeah. you misread the assignment. <laughs> no, I would love it if you sent us a picture of you and your friends like in sleeping bags, like dispersed around a room. I'd be like, okay, we know what's going just on. Just ten here. of the worst haircuts you've ever, ever seen. seen, like '90s dudes haircuts. Just Awful. Like, we all had like that, that swoop, gelled down the yeah. duck butt, gelled down and flipped up love. in the front. I don't know, like the... a hat. Oh yeah. Yeah. And or like. Uh, Shave the sides, grow your hair. I mean, I kind of have it now. Grow your hair out real long, and then like it comes like to like a swoopy point. Yeah, in the and back. you're like, look how long his. Yeah. The, it, I remember in the at one point in the '90s, it was like an arms race to how long you could grow the top how high and how short you could shave the sides. Yeah. Like somebody would be like, yo, you hear Pete's mom, let him do a clip zero. And they'd be like, no <laughs> way. My mom says I can't get below a clip two. And then like getting bicked was when you did a razor and shaving cream. And it's like, dude, Pete bicked his undercut. And it's like, no, that's the coolest. And it's like, you look at him and it looks like raw chicken that's with like, like yeah, and you're like, and you're like, I'm so jealous. Yeah, 100%. And that still persists is like, 
I'll get my hair cut every time, and my wife will go, it's too short. You got too short on the side. You don't have to go cl- that close. I'm like, no, you, that's how. That's where you get the haircut you you're paying for. You can take the boy out of Long Island. You can't take Long Island out of the boy. You're damn right. There you right go. Right here, baby. Freeport to Belmore. Moving there on up. There you go. <laughs> um, I hear that you have a very important announcement to make. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, this Coming August 16th, if you will, mm. uh, Corked, HeadGum's first scripted podcast, uh, will be released on HeadGum wherever you get podcasts. And a uh, talented voice cast uh, written and directed by my friends Giancarlo and John, who you know from HeadGum World, and uh, me, Betsy Sodaro, Anthony Gio, Whitmer Thomas. A lot of great voice talent. Check Mary, it out. Isn't Mary Holland? Is Mary Holland too? Probably, maybe. I don't know. It could be that could be a uh, fake fake news. So. That could be fake news. I mean, I you know better than me because I rec- only recorded my. Uh, you know what? She's in it. Fuck it. She'll <laughs> she'll deal. <laughs> she is. See, thank you. There we go. Good. You made that. <laughs> there we go. Scripted pod. A scripted pod. It was a real fun to record. I, it's about some uh, piece of shit who inherits a vineyard uh, from his family. And I love that. I'm that piece of shit all That's your life. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, where else can everyone follow you and find you? I'm at Gabrus on all social media. I guess just I- IG and Twitter. But if you could watch 101 Places to Party Before You Die, however, you know, if you don't have cable, uh, some of my friends, and I'm not recommending strangers do this, but if you're my friend, you can buy the season on Amazon. And, and it's like only that. $20 and you can watch every episode. You and Adam Pally. It's me and Adam Pally, uh, who, you, who you may know from comedy or podcasts. And we travel the country partying and trying to see if we can still do it at 40 years old and what that means for us. And, and I also say here, the before you die element is not facetious. Like, we both had parents die young, and we've kind of been living by this crazy ethos since that happened to both of us. So we bring that energy of, like, let's do it now to the show. So I highly, I highly recommend it. I'm, like, talking directly to the camera. Yeah, good. <laughs> recommend it. Uh, highly <laughs> recommend it. Thank you. Um, and if everyone is in Los Angeles next week on August 5th, me and Matt Rogers are co-headlining a show. You get to watch our a little hours back-to-back, a two-for-one deal at the Hollywood Improv here in sunny Los Angeles. Oh, shit. You should really come get tickets to that. I'm going to post it on my social media. And... Um, oh. You know, thank you so much for listening and supporting the podcast. And really, it makes me so happy that that you guys listen to it. And, um, you know, as I say, as I say each and every week, stay cool. Never change. Until next time. Ciao. That was a HeadGum Podcast.